Right, onwards with binomial distribution. Now this is leading on from discrete random variables that we've been doing recently. Discrete meaning they take um, particular values, it's not continuous. Okay, so a discrete random variable follows a binomial distribution if it can satisfy the following. So it's a particular kind of distribution within the, the discrete random variables. So if these four conditions are met, then we know it can follow a binomial distribution. So firstly, there are a fixed number of trials. The trials are independent of each other, so the outcome of one doesn't affect the outcome of the other. The probability of success is constant. And there are two outcomes which can be classed as success or failure. And the notation for it looks like this. So if x is the number of successful outcomes in n trials where the probability of success is p, then we write it like this. And you read it as x follows a binomial distribution with n trials and probability of success is p. Right, now to calculate it, we get this the following formula. Now, it looks a little bit complicated because we're doing it in general terms first, and then I'll show you how this works with actual numbers in an example. So the probability that x equals r. r is just the number that you're trying to find it out for. We'll come to that later. It'll make sense. So here's the official formula. It is ncr times the probability of success to the power of r times q to the n minus r, where q is the probability of failure. It's 1 minus p. So if your probability of success was 40%, q would be 60%. Now on the formula sheet it looks a little different to that, so you might want to just make a note that this is how it looks on the formula sheet, so that you can recognise it in the exam if you need to. So, example number one. We've got a random variable x that follows a binomial distribution with n equals 6 and p equals 2. So we can write that down like this. Um, we're going to find the probability that x equals 3. So we are doing 6 trials. We want to work out the probability that 3 of them are successful. So put that into the formula. n is 6, r is 3. So we've got 6 choose 3. Probability of success is 0 0.2, so that's 0 0.2 to the power of 3. So the probability of failure will be 0 0.8, also to the power of 3, because 6 minus 3 is 3. Pop it into your calculator for your answer. Doing it for 4, we would have 6 choose 4, times 0 0.2 to the power of 4, times 0 0.8 to the power of 2. 6 minus 4 is 2. And finally, the probability that x equals 6, just have a think about what that means. We're doing six trials, and this is asking us what's the probability that all six of them are successful. So we'd expect that number to be fairly small. When you're doing these, you should have a think in your head about what you think the answer should come to, so that you can just be mentally checking that it's about what you expect, in case you've made any mistakes. Okay, now let's have a little think about where this actually comes from. So let's consider that probability of x equals 4, 1, so I can explain it to you. We are wanting to know the probability of having four successful outcomes. Imagine if you'd drawn this as a tree diagram. It would get pretty big, but on each stage of the tree, tree diagram it would split up into two branches of uh, success or failure. Now this, having the probability of x equals four, is looking for all of the branches where we have four successes and two failures. So each of those branches would have, in that line, 4 lots of 0 0.2 times by 2 lots of 0 0.8. But they could also be in a different order. It could go 4 successes, then 2 failures, or it could go 2 failures, then 4 successes, or any mixture in between. And that's where the 6 choose 4 comes in. It shows us how many different ways we could arrange those 4 failures, uh, sorry, 4 successes and 2 failures. You don't ever have to explain that, but it might help you to understand where these numbers are coming from. Okay, example number two looks like this. So this is telling us x follows binomial distribution. We have nine trials and the probability of success is 0.45. So first one, probability x equals zero. Put it into our formula and it looks like this. But you can recognize that when you've got x equals zero, you can actually do this one a little bit faster because anything choose zero is one Anything to the power of 0 is 1, so we only need to do 9 failures, 0 0.55 to the power of 9.
And the next one, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 7, remember these are discrete, so we can only have whole numbers of successes. You can't have uh, 8.4 successes. So the probability of x being greater than or equal to 7 is the same as the probability of x equals 7 plus the probability x equals 8 plus the probability x equals 9. So we need to do each of those and add them together. And finally, the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1. Now, there is a faster way to do this. We don't really want to do 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 all the way up to 9 and add them together. But we can recognise it's the same as if we'd done 1 minus the probability that x equals 0. That one we've already worked out in A, so that becomes a very quick calculation to do. OK, finally, a worded question. We've got a fair cubical dice, so a normal dice, it's rolled 10 times, the number of sixes S is recorded. We want to find the probability that exactly half of the rolls are sixes and less than three sixes are rolled. So let's just write down what it looks like. S follows a binomial distribution. S is counting how many sixes we have. We're trialling it out 10 times and the probability of success is one six. We know it's binomial because it fits all of those four rules we talked about at the beginning. We have a fixed number of trials, 10. The probability of success is constant. The trials are independent of each other, so when you roll a 6 it doesn't affect whether you roll a 6 the next time. And the outcomes can be determined as success or failure. So exactly half the rolls are 6s, that means we would have 5 6s. Put it into our formula, and here's our result. Less than um, 3 6s would be the probability of no sixes plus one six plus two six, pop them into our formula, get the result. And that sums up binomial distribution for us.